student uh, for today and remember this is Dr. Sami, Dr. Sami uh, Chemistry Demonstration Experiments. Uh, for today we are doing something that is covered in book 3, that is form 3 in the Kenyan system of education and that is a process called titration and we are going to do direct titration. Remember we have other types of titration, we have the back titration, the redox titration, the double indicator titration, but we are doing a very simple titration process, direct titration. You are asking yourself maybe, what is titration? Titration is a method of quantitative analysis, otherwise it is called volumetric analysis. Why? Because we use volumes of two liquids or two solutions for that matter in this case, one of the solutions is standard, by standard I mean it is of a known concentration. The concentration is known, so it's a standard solution. The other one, the concentration is unknown. And therefore we're going to use this process and do what we call standardizing. We are going to standardize the solution whose concentration is not known. So that is the objective of this experiment. So be with me, let's see how you go about it. And it's a very easy process. And student fear it, don't fear it. What do I need? For today, I'm going to use sodium hydroxide. That is 0.8 molar sodium hydroxide. The concentration is known. So sodium hydroxide in this case will be my standard solution. Then I'm going to use hydrochloric acid, dilute hydrochloric acid. So this will be the, concept, uh, the solution whose concentration is not known. Yes, it's not known. So we are going to standardize this. That is the aim, to know the molality of the HCl. The apparatus that I need, I have a burette that is mounted onto a, a stand. Ensure all the time the readings are facing you and anytime you are putting the solution, the, the level should be at your eye level. We have a white tile, the white tile will help me contrast the color. Contrast the color, we have uh, phenolphthalein, this will be my indicator for this matter. I'm having conical, conical flask, the best apparatus I told you before. For titration. So that's a conical flask. I'm going to have a filter funnel in case I need to, to use it there. Then I will use a pipette, a 25 ml pipette. Always bear in mind what is the capacity of the pipette, a 25 ml pipette. Then the empty beaker there will help me to discard any solution that I, need, I don't need. So to start with, yes, to start with. I'm going to fill the burette with hydrochloric acid. That is step number one. Fill the burette with hydrochloric acid to the zero mark. So I will have it. I will have it. I will have it. So I put it. Oops. Always watch out. Always take care. Watch out of that. I will adjust the volume. I can move the filter funnel. I will adjust the volume. Remember to read below the meniscus. I will adjust it to zero. Yes, below the meniscus, I'm at zero. Then I'm going to, I have my acid in the burette. Then I'm going to use a pipette and I just pipette 25 ml. I just need 25 ml. Of the base. It is advisable to use a pipette filler for several reasons. One of them is hygiene. You know, it is more hygienic to use a pipette filler than using your mouth. So learn how to use a pipette, especially the era we are in of the coronavirus. Learn to use a, pi a pipette filler. So create a vacuum, a washing vacuum in, then place it on the mouth of the pipette. And you can see it is sucking the, sol the, the solution very easily. Yes, you can see. I'm just using it comfortably. Comfortably, I can adjust above the mark. Above the mark, oh, sorry. So I only need to be careful. I only need to be very careful, yes. Then I adjust. I adjust the volume slowly. Yep, 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 yep. I just need to be very accurate. Accurate because remember, by that is uh, one of the apparatus that is very accurate, it is beyond what the mark. Um, so, 
looking for that. I'll keep trying until I do it well. I do it well. Yes. So remember, 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 it's a matter of being accurate. This is quantitative. Every, every, every drop there counts. Every drop counts. So I'm adjusting. I'm opening very slowly. Yes, there it is. I have it. Then I will empty the sodium hydroxide into a conical flask. Then I will add three drops. Three drops of phenolphthalein. Three drops of phenolphthalein. It is pink in color. Now I'm ready to start. Looking behind me, we have what you call the titration table. The titration table. Like for one, the one I have there, I have pre done the, 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 the trials or the titration. But we can do one pair, then we go back to those figures and see what exactly should we do. So I have the solution, the, the hydrochloric acid uh, in a burette. Then I am ready to do a titration process. So what I'm going to do is what we call titration. I will use my left hand side for the tap and the right hand side for the conical flask. The conical flask. Then I only need to be very careful. I only need to be very careful as I titrate. I do it drop by drop, drop by drop, drop by drop. Yes, as we watch out, as we, 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 we just check. We're looking for one point where the pink color will just disappear. It is an exact point. It is, should be an exact point at a given uh, point of this titration process. So I'll keep adding, I'll keep adding, and I am not worried because I can even repeat. So in case I make a, a very big error, I can easily redo. So I'm still adding. I add, I shake, I add, I do the swarming with that one, that one, that one. I do it, I keep adding, keep adding. Yes, at a given point, add, uh, no, add just a drop and shake. Add a drop and shake. Add a drop and shake. It's almost, it is almost there. Yes, it's almost there. I keep adding, keep adding, keep adding. Yes, 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 yes. Do, this one requires some patience. Some patience because you need to note at, that there is one drop somewhere where the base will just neutralize yes and there we are there we are there we are now the pink color is no longer there that is called the end point i need to read the burette here now for this case so with this one remember to read at your eye level then below the meniscus and the burette is calibrated with the the, the whole number mark we have the 18 the 20 between the 18 and 19 that is there is 10 mark so that means every one small mark represent one ml what we usually say always give your uh, volume the, the, the rate reading to one decimal place but if you are able to read between two small lines it is allowed but you can only place uh, use zero or five for the second decimal place you cannot read beyond there. So with accuracy in this one, I would prefer to use one decimal place. I'm working at 20, uh, like that one, this one is 20.0. 20 Actually, exactly as what I have on the table, 20.0. For the sake of the calculation, because that's why I want to take you more, I have done the first try. I record it. I'm supposed to record the initial volume. It was zero. The final volume, it is 20 now. If I subtract, I get 20. I can decide to start there. Like in this case, I had done it and then it was at 20.5. It ran up to 40.5. The subtraction there are about 20. If I decide now to refill my burette or maybe get up to 10, 10.0, up to 30.0, then I subtract and that is 20. Now, once I do three trials, it is very advisable you do the three trials. And the three trials we recommend the, the, the range should be 0 0.2, maximum 0 0.2. Now, I want first of all to take you to the knowledge. How do you do 
to the average. I have the case study for four students here. Like I have student one. This student one did the very same experiment we've done. And he or she got 20.4, 20.1, and 20.2. How does this student proceed to calculate the average? If you look at 20.4, it is an outlier. It is quite far. It is not within 0.2 of the other two values. So we do not consider it when we are doing the average. So the way we do the average, I will take 20.1 and 20.2, I divide by 2. One outlier, it is not considered. And then I get the average volume. That is for student 1. If I have a case study for another student, look at this student. This student did this very same experiment and got 20.3, 20.2, and 20.1. The 20.1 and 20.3, the farthest two, the two extremes, are within 0 0.2. So I can average all of them. So the way to average, 20.3, 20.2, 20.1, all of them added, divided by 3, and you get 20.2. That is student in case 2. Student 3, student 3 got 20.2, 20.1, and the third one, 20.1. Once the values are repeating, when you're considering in calculation, do not take one and ignore the other. So you add all of them. 20.2. 20.1, 20.1 again added together, divided by 3. If you use your calculator well, that's a, a recurring decimal. Therefore, it is very much advisable, do not round it off, maybe to one decimal place. You can, or the most appropriate approximation you can do there, it is to the nearest three decimal places. Like this is 20.133. Because we need that for the calculation. Then we have student 4, and uh, student 4, I think, is the case study I have on the board. The, the student got 20.0, 20.0, 20.0. Maybe somebody can ignore you know, and say it's all 20, so I don't need to average. But the step for, for, for calculation, you'll miss it. Just show the addition. 20.0, 20.0, 20.0 added divided by 3. I get 20.0. That is the average volume from the bullet, it is called the average title. This is a title. So once I have that, the next will be calculations, questions from the table, questions from the table. And here we work from the known to unknown. We know the volume of sodium hydroxide. It was 25. We know the molality of sodium hydroxide. It was 0 0.5. So this is a solution that we know everything about it. And that's where we start. Let's work out what? The number of moles of sodium hydroxide used. And here is the formula. The number of moles is calculated by multiplying the volume of the solution you're using. You multiply it with the molality of that solution divided by a thousand. And with that, I have done it for you. It is the 25 centimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide multiplied by 0 0.8 molar divided by 1000 i get 0 0.02 this is the number of moles of what sodium hydroxide used we know the amount of sodium hydroxide that was in the conical flask the one we did the pipette the next thing will be we connect now the number of moles of sodium hydroxide with the number of moles of hyd uh, that is the dilute hydrochloric acid that was used so what do we need? An equation. We need an equation. For that, I've also done that for you. I've done that for you. That is sodium hydroxide reacting with hydrochloric acid. I get sodium chloride salt and I get water. So that is the neutralization reaction that was taking place inside the conical flask. What is the, the point of interest? The, the more ratio. Sodium hydroxide is to HCl, the mole ratio is 1 is to 1. If it's 1 is to 1, the next thing they will ask me, how many moles of HCl reacted? I know the equation, I know the mole ratio, I know the moles of the base, I can be able to work it out. So with that, I will go. I need to work out moles of hydrochloric acid used. The number of moles, or otherwise the mole ratio of the two is 1 is to 1, then the moles of HCl will be equal to the number of moles of sodium hydroxide 
which is, as we calculated before, 0 0.02 moles. We know the number of moles of the acid we are working with. Now, what is the other question? Our objective, the molality of HCl. So, if I'm asked of the molality, again, I have a formula. I have a formula. Molality of any substance will be given the number of moles uh, contained, multiplied by 1,000 over or divided by the volume of that specific solution. Remember, this is the formula. If you are not good in mastering the formula, like me, because that's why I've written, because I am not very good in mastering the formula, we can use what we call the first principle. Argue out. If a given volume has a given amount of substance in mole, what about maybe a thousand? That's like the molality. And still you work it out. So with that, molality of the HCl that I'm working with, the number of moles of the acid used, multiplied by 1000, divided by the volume. Why volume? Where did I get this? Do not forget the average volume that we had from the beginning, from the uh, the titration table. I get that the concentration of the acid that I didn't know, it was one molar. That is 1.0 molar. So with that, that's a simple di uh, direct titration process. And don't take it as if it's something that is rocket science. It's very simple, very basic. What do you need to do? Follow the amount of substance in those solutions. And with that, titration process will be very easy for you. Maybe in the future, I will do a back titration for you and a redox one. Otherwise, do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Do not forget to like, do not to tell a friend, to tell a friend until we conquer in this field of chemistry. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much.